Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Hope you're doing well. Before we begin, there's something I want you to do for me. Take a breath, get comfortable, and just let the next 30 seconds wash over you. If that didn't give you waves of nostalgia, I weep for you. So, in case it wasn't incredibly obvious from the title and last 30 seconds, today we're taking a dive back into the early days of gaming to find out. Can you beat Ocarina of Time without a sword? Now then, it's time for everyone's favorite part of video games. Lore! Beautiful, enigmatic, unskippable lore. Uh, you know, actually this wasn't bad back when this game came out. This was, what, the fourth Zelda game? Fourth one anyone remembers or wants to remember anyway. We don't talk about Philip or his CDI in this house. But yeah, Zelda was basically a new thing back then. There wasn't really a pattern to the games yet, so the story felt fresh and exciting. Ah, finally, on to more exciting things. Like this makeshift roller coaster ride we're apparently taking. Navi? Navi, slow down! You're gonna. Oh god, look out, kid! Jesus, Navi, watch where you're going, you almost. Uh. Let's, uh. Let's just move on. Ah. <sighs> Smell that? That's the smell of nostalgia. Feels like home. We've got poorly rendered scribbles, adorable children of the forest, potential YouTube demonetization, and juvenile delinquency. What more could you possibly want from a game from 1998? But as much fun as I'm having exploring my old stomping grounds, we should probably get to the challenge run. And what better way to start a challenge run than with incessant grinding? Thankfully, we're just grinding out money, and there's some pretty easy ways to get it. You can hop across these platforms without falling into the water, poke your head behind the shopkeep's counter, and run across the tallest bridges in the village while trying not to succumb to the terrible, terrible controls. Man, we really didn't know how bad we had it. I don't remember having issues with these controls as a kid. Actually, now that I think about it, a portion of you might not have ever played this game before. You probably have no idea what's happening right now. So, whether you're too young to ever have played this game, or old enough that your brain has pushed out all of your memories of it, let me fill you in. In order to progress, we need to get to the Great Deku Tree. And in order to get to him, we need a sword and shield to get past some kid that's guarding the entrance. Thankfully, the forest kids have a sword just lying around in some back alley. And the only thing that was guarding it was a rolling boulder and a hit of nostalgia. As for the shield, we can buy one at the shop for 40 rupees. Easy enough. But that's not all we're going to need. We also need sticks. As many sticks as our tiny little hands can hold. Because remember, for the purposes of our challenge run, that sword we found is essentially just a replica. If we ever tried to swing it at anything, it would break and shatter like the useless piece of plastic that it is. Normally, you could just kill a few enemies that drop the sticks and call it a day, but that's a little hard to do when you don't have a weapon. So back to the grind we go. And after a few more minutes of jumping back and forth across water platforms, we've got enough money to buy 10 sticks. That should hold us over for now. All right, Mido, I've got the stuff. Just let me, just, Mido, Mido. My so I may or may not have decked a man-child in the face. Moving on, right on over to the Great Deku Tree. And yes, we are going inside. Don't ask questions. Okay, first dungeon of the run. Let's see how this goes. We don't really have a good way to fight enemies at the moment, but they're not exactly able to fight back if we play it careful, so we should be fine. I find the map, which is more useful than you'd think, clear the first combat room by playing a little return to center, and with a little more exploring, find myself another option as far as weapons go. The slingshot. It's a simple enough tool. Aim at your target, either with free aim or Z targeting, and release. Gets the job done. And we've got 30 pellets to work with too. I then find the compass, which not only shows where I'm standing on the map, but also shows where every treasure chest is located. Again, far more useful than you'd think. And it's here that we get to use our sticks. Sticks are good for two things. Swinging, and lighting on fire. When they're lit on fire, you can use them to solve an assortment of puzzles, like lighting a torch to open a door. But they will burn down to nubbins if you don't put it away quickly. And I really don't want to have to grind for that money again. Anyway, I duke it out with some Skultulas, take the shortcut down into the basement layer of the dungeon, do some more puzzles, all of which involve pressing buttons and lighting sticks on fire to burn away spider webs, then threaten a Deku scrub until it tells me the code to the boss door. Though if I'm being honest, I really didn't need to do that. That code is burned into my brain. Shoot some eye puzzles with the slingshot, 
dodge spinning spike traps, push some moon blocks around, and speedrun the entire dungeon until we make it to the boss room. I'll be honest, I was pleasantly surprised. I think I've killed, what, maybe three or four enemies in this entire dungeon? I swear I used to go around fighting every single enemy that crossed my path because I thought it was necessary for progression, but I'm not doing any kind of skips or glitches here. Turns out most of the doors are just unlocked and you can push further into the dungeon by running around enemies. Guess Younger Lemon was a bit of a murder hobo. Eh, can't say I'm that surprised. But with that said, we've made it to the first dungeon boss. Shock, gasp, awe. Seriously though, did anyone else think we were gonna get brick walled before now? I mean, I did. But don't celebrate just yet. Time for the first boss, Goma, the parasitic armored arachnid. What horror has the Deku tree birthed in the deep dark depths of its roots? How can man hope to overcome such horror, let alone a child? How can, oh right, glowing weak spots. And once you've got Goma on the ground, we go in for the kill with a jumping stick attack. Unconventional, but effective. So while I fail miserably to fight against the inverted aiming controls, let's talk about what's happening here. Turns out the slingshot can only stun Goma, not injure her, hence the stick attack. And for those of you wondering how much damage a stick does, it's actually not insignificant. One stick attack is the same damage as a slash with your sword. And just like the sword, if you do a jumping attack, you do double the damage. So after taking out Goma's minions with my slingshot, all it takes is another slingshot to the eyeball to stun her, followed by a third and final jumping stick attack to the face. And there you go, Goma destroyed. That, uh, that was easier than I was expecting. And for our trouble, a full heart container. Normally I'd laugh and say that we don't need it, but these controls are something else, man. We're gonna need all the easy access health we can get. All right, Deku Tree, I did the thing. Now, oh God, more lore. No, 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 skip, 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 skip. And there we go. We got the first spiritual stone. One down, two more to go. Now what do you say we make like a tree and leaf this forest, eh hey, Navi? No, not even a giggle? Oh God, I think I killed the Deku Tree with that one. Well, uh, nothing we could have done, time to leave, and ah oh, shit, it's the fuzz. And they want me to do community service. Uh, look, a distraction. I already served my time. I'm not going back. Don't want to. Can't make it. Ah, Hyrule Field. Young Lemon's Playground. So many places to go. So many secrets to unearth. Can't wait to. Oh, God, demon. Mash B, mash B, mash B, mash B. Uh, yes? Huh. Glad we never have to do that again. Seriously, though, Hyrule Field was massive when I was younger. It felt like you could explore it for hours and you still wouldn't have found everything. Unfortunately, we're on a bit of a time crunch, so we're just gonna speed run our way to Hyrule Castle. You know, assuming we can make it before sundown. Because if you don't make it before then, oh god, actual demons, you'll never take me alive! So, after spending all night in the moat, the city opens back up. Fun fact, this city gate is actually one of the better grinding spots in the game. Simply climb this chain, then jump off and break your ankles. And there you go, insurance fraud made simple. The beautiful part is that this grinding spot is right next to a loading zone. All you need to do is walk through after collecting your cash, then turn around and go right back out to get more. And with our definitely well-deserved full wallet, we can now buy a new shield. Technically, it's too big for us and we can't use it properly, but when has that ever stopped me? Oh, right, this place has a back alley. Forgot about that. What, uh, what's going on back here? Packs of wild duck, what the hell are you on about? Anyway, we need to push forward. We need to go speak to the princess, and the only way to get there is by breaking into the castle, naturally. So, first we need to demon, but no. What we really need is a good old fashioned egg. And after loitering on private grounds for about 24 hours, we now have a fully grown chicken, because that's how eggs work. Scare a man with your new chicken, play Metal Gear Solid for a few minutes, and before you know it, we've made it to Princess Zelda. So are you gonna give me a quest or, oh God, not more lore. Get me out of here, I'll do anything. I'll even break this window. Oh, thank God, a guard. Can you throw me out of here before, what, why? I'm just a kid, what is wrong with you? Ugh, fine. I get an exorbitant amount of lore from both the princess and her ninja. Show off my ocarina skills. God damn it. Then finally, finally get moving towards our next goal, Death Mountain. But first, chickens! Go back where you belong! All right, lady, I did the thing. Pay up, there we go. One of my end game weapons acquired. And no, I'm not joking. You'll see how important this bad boy is later. Up the winding pathway of Mount Doom and into my favorite place in the entire game. Goron City. Fun fact, my little brother Lime used to call Goron's chocolate chip cookie men. I guess I see it. But before we can enter the second dungeon, we need to visit my parole officer. You know how it is. Oh dang, has the slingshot been this good this entire time? I make my way through the Lost Woods shooting gallery, play some music with Officer Saria, kidnap a fairy on my way back to Goron City, because I'm a rebel like that, then play the hot new beats I just learned for the King of the Gorons. Beats so hot that he actually gives me a reward just for playing them. A magic bracelet that makes me physically strong enough to lift certain objects. 
like this bomb. Uh, you know, I didn't exactly have a plan when I picked this up. Oh god, it's blinking faster! Do you think anyone will notice? But with that done, it's time for Dungeon 2, to Dungo's Cavern. Oh my god, I'm only at Dungeon 2? You know the story beats by now. Get map, use newly acquired skill to progress through the dungeon, then skip past as many enemies as you can to conserve your supplies. Again, much like the first dungeon, really shocked at how many rooms you can just run through. Turns out most of the doors open because of puzzle solving, not murder. Who'd have guessed? In fact, there's only two rooms that you need to fight your way through to progress, and they both involve these stupid lizard things. But with enough sticks and slingshot pellets, you'll be just fine. Want to know something cool? The little Dodongos can be easily defeated if you feed them a bomb. Young Lemon always just hacked and slashed at their tails. But yeah, learning a lot today. I find a bomb bag, Academy be praised, then use said bombs to solve even more puzzles before we finally reach the dungeon boss. Behold, those of you who've never played Ocarina of Time, the infernal dinosaur, King Dodongo. Funnily enough, we already learned how to defeat him earlier in the dungeon. When he's inhaling for a fire breath attack, just feed him our favorite weapon. From there, do what comes natural. Do this a whole whopping two times and King Dodongo goes down. I, uh, don't remember him being that easy. Have sticks always been this overpowered? Oh, hey, hard container. Okay, Darunia, I solved your dinosaur problem. Can I have- <clears throat> Not exactly the most gentle of transactions, but there you have it. Spiritual stone number two acquired. Ah, shit, it's the fuzz again. Get away from me. I've been going to my parole meetings. This is- ah! Before we move on to dungeon number three, I've got a little housekeeping to do. I climb my way up to the top of Death Mountain, ignore the lore demon, blow up a wall for good measure, and play some sweet tunes in front of a magical fountain. You know, as you do. Which in turn summons- Oh no! No, oh, Lord, why are you so angular? Why is every part of you so sharp? Look away! Sweet God in heaven, protect the children and look away- All right, we have a magic bar now. And years of unresolved trauma that we're going to need to work through, but what else is new? I play some of my world-renowned beats at the graveyard, which results in the graveyard exploding. This is me we're talking about. Can't say I'm that surprised. Well, we've already exploded the grave. We might as well see what's inside it. Oh, that's not good. Remember how we were just talking about unresolved trauma? Add another memory to the pile. But if you run through the tomb crying fast enough, you'll find a song. A song that, when played, can summon the power of the sun. An apparently calm, wandering souls. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no way. There's no way. Are you kidding me? This song freezes re-deads? Man, this is what I both love and hate about playing games I used to play as a kid. As an adult, you can understand everything the game was trying to tell you and beat the games easier. But you also get a pretty blunt look at your younger self's comprehension skills. Ah well. Better late than never. Anyway, back to housekeeping. I head on over to the shooting gallery in Hyrule Castle, and clear it on my first try for a larger slingshot ammunition pouch. No no, don't watch the VOD, it was definitely the first try. I then blow up a rock just outside of the castle, find another great fairy fountain, and, after another round of angular nightmares, acquire Din's Fire, which is basically the equivalent of casting fireball on yourself. You'll see what I mean later. After that, I play two rounds of bomb chew bowling, clearing them both on the first try, and get myself a bunch of remote control bombs and a larger bomb bag. Why do you keep mentioning the VOD? I'm trying to save you time. Don't watch it, just trust me. Then, after being a master bombardier, I shoot a few targets in the Lost Woods and get an even larger ammunition pouch for my slingshot. Then, buy a stick bag, which I had no idea existed, from a Deku scrub. 20 sticks, 50 slingshots, more bombs, magic fire. I think we're ready. Time to make our way to the third dungeon. First things first, though, I see a chicken in need. Come on, egg. We've got some fish people to save. Ah, here we are, Zora's Domain. Be free, my feathered brother. Enjoy your new home. I zip through Zora's Domain, get a scale that lets me dive more than three feet deep, use said scale to travel through a warp gate in the bottom of the pool, and arrive at Lake Hylia. I then use the scale again to dive into the bottom of the lake, where I find another bottle. Oh, and a letter from the Zora Princess telling me where she is and how to save her, but hey, bottle! I tell the King of the Zoras about the letter, and he very quickly jumps into action in a burst of unparalleled speed, moving out of the way so that I can enter the third dungeon. Which is a giant fish. Yep. Third dungeon is a giant fish. Look, I don't make the games, I just break them. I tickle the fish's uvula. Do fish have uvula? Then find the princess. Well damn, that was easy. This is gonna be our fastest dungeon yet. And she just fell down a hole into the deeper dungeon. Gotta be one of those days, isn't it? <sighs> well, come on then, princess. Let's go find a way out. But there's at least a little bit of a silver lining in all of this. Turns out the princess can be used as a blunt object. So that's something. She even does damage. <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, hey, Steve. That tuna kid got you too, huh? How'd you beef it? He, uh... He beat me to death with the princess. 
You what? But after running from room to room and clearing them with the princess and slingshot, we finally have a tool I've been very excited to get, the boomerang. And while it doesn't always do damage, it does more often than not. It also has unlimited ammo and does cutting damage. So with new weapon in hand, it's time to speed run this dungeon. I get the <laughs> map, the compass, and with a little further exploring, the spiritual stone? Huh, okay, that was easy. Time to go home. Princess, princess, get off the platform. Get off the, <sighs> all right, whatever. Oh good, she figured out how to make the elevator come back down. You know, on second thought, I don't think that's her. The giant Octorok is simple enough. Throw boomerang and pray for good RNG. If the game loves you, the Octorok will spin and try to get away from you, leaving its weak point wide open, which lets you get in there with a stick. And just one stick, I guess. Seriously, what the hell are these sticks made out of? But after a little more exploring and looking for the princess, we finally found the dungeon boss, the bioelectric anemone, Baronade. And let me just say, this boss, very good. The concept is simple enough. Dodge the lasers, cut the ventricles. But unlike the other bosses, this boss has more patterns and has varying attacks to keep you on your toes. Use the boomerang to clear all the jellyfish and you'll enter phase two. That's right, there's a second phase. Kill the second wave of jellyfish and you'll leave Baronade open for attacks, which means it's time for stick. Huh, that usually finishes the fight. This might be harder than I thought. Oh God, come on, get the stick. Well, you don't like the stick? All right, that's it. Time to go full Dark Souls mode. Just gotta iframe my way to victory. And get greedy. There we go. Man, that was more intense than I remember. That was a lot of fun. A heart for my troubles, and hopefully a spiritual stone for- Too close! Too close! Look, you can keep it. I don't even know why I want it. Just please stop coming closer! And there you go. Spiritual stone got. The princess also might have said something about it technically being an engagement ring, and that we're supposed to get married or something, but I have to go... somewhere else. Oh, I also went and got Favor's Wind, which lets you create warp points. Which sounds cool, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't really see the value. If anyone's got a reason why this is cool and how you used it, let me know in the comments, because I can honestly say I've never even cast a spell in the last 25 years of playing the game. Anyway, I make my way back to Hyrule Castle and, is that Zelda? And she's getting awfully close to, oh God, not the face. And you're throwing things at me too? The hell lady. Seriously, everyone in this world is so rude. They just, oh, hey, it's Ganondorf. You looking for Zelda? Uh, you just missed her. She went south like a bat out of hell. You could probably fucking, why does everyone keep attacking me? But anyway, it turns out that Zelda actually threw a precious artifact at me when she rode past. I'm not sure if that makes it better or worse, actually. And with the Ocarina of Time in hand, I visit the Temple of Time, play some sick beats, as you do, and finally, finally get all the spiritual stones back to their rightful place, which in turn opens up the door to our true goal, the Master Sword. Glorious. Finally, after hours of running around with a fake sword, we'll have a real sword. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. This one's a replica too? Look, it weighs like two pounds. This isn't even real metal. What's worse, the stupid sword was trapped. I got stuck in a spiritual plane for seven years. Seven years wasted. What am I supposed to do now? Get a job? Oh, Waru actually did give me a job. He wants me to get all the other medallions of power or whatever. Sure, why not? Not like I have anything else to do. All right, let's, oh, uh, hmm. That looks a bit foreboding. Oh no. Oh no. I sure hope Princess Zelda is all right. This is your fault, Navi. You're bad. Well, while I take in the damage of the surrounding world, let's think about this. Good news, we can now use our Hylian shield. So that's cool, I guess. Bad news, monsters are literally everywhere. Our childhood hangouts are now destroyed beyond recognition, and I can't use most of my tools. Good news, the chicken lady gives me a free chicken egg, which means I can now have a chicken friend for the rest of the game. Bad news, I can't use most of my tools. We're talking the boomerang, the slingshot, sticks. Literally everything except for bombs and magic fire bombs don't work. I guess technically Deku Nuts still work too, but they don't do damage, so, you know. But with few, if any, viable weapons at our disposal, that means it's time for everyone's favorite, housekeeping. I race the ghost of an old gravekeeper, who I definitely never bothered to visit as a kid, and because I have adult-sized legs now, I was able to run fast enough to get a special prize, the hook shot. It's no boomerang, but it's something. Then I talk to this handsome fella, and he teaches me the Song of Storms. That'll probably come in handy at some point. After that, I go back to the Lost Woods, pick on Mido for being shorter than me now, then try to find Officer Saria to explain that I'm late for my probation check-ins by seven years because of a magical sword. I'm sure she'll understand. Not the face, why is it always the face? Well, at least the hookshot works. 
a bit more violently than I remember, but it is a sharp spring-loaded metal hook. But it was on my way to my parole meeting that we encountered the first brick wall of the run. Say hello to Slim Jim. Slim Jim here likes to slap the ground with his hammer, which is kind of a problem, because I don't have any weapons that can reach that far. I thought I had him for a second there, but nope, not close enough. Thankfully, I do have some bomb chews, and they do appear to be doing damage, but bomb chews are extremely difficult to come by, so I can't exactly be throwing these at every long-range enemy I come across. But for the time being, they do the trick. Okay, we're here, now where's... Huh. You know what? I guess I never checked to see what day it was when I came out of my seven-year coma. Is it Sunday? It's probably Sunday. Oh, hey, another ninja. This one, Sheik, teaches me the Minuet of Forest, which lets me teleport outside of this dungeon anytime I play it. I guess that solves our Slim Jim problem. But that doesn't solve our Forest Temple problem. Welcome to dungeon number four, ladies and gentlemen, where the wolves are ferocious, and we don't have any easily recoverable weapons to attack with. I eventually developed a hookshot and bomb wampo combo, but bombs aren't exactly the easiest thing to find in the wild. Kinda getting worried about our ammo count. Oh good, this dungeon is haunted. Just what I thought it was missing. <sighs> well, I guess we better hurry up and find the treasure of this dungeon. Oh, what fresh hell is this? Say hello to the second brick wall. And so quickly after the first one, too. I can stun the Bone Brothers on occasion with my hookshot, but my only method of damage at the moment is my bombs, which they can block with their shields. If you get lucky, they'll walk into the blast radius and take a side hit, but they have a lot of health, and we have a very limited amount of bombs. Hoping to just get lucky isn't exactly a good strategy. Deku Nuts work sometimes, but the stun time isn't quite long enough to set up a bomb properly either. We may need to rethink our strategy on this one. I haven't seen that screen in a few years. First things first, though, we need to restock. I'm fresh out of bombs and kidnapped fairies. Oh yeah, Slim Jim. Guess we didn't solve that problem after all. Is what I would say if I didn't just channel my inner Dark Souls and run around him. Kinda upset I didn't think of that the first time. Okay, round two. Let's try this again. New strategy. Hold a bomb, then let them hit me. Is it the best strategy I've ever thought of? No, but it's the best worst idea I've got. All right, there we are. One skeleton down, one to go. You know what? This stupid idea of mine might actually work. It shouldn't, and I'm kind of upset that it does, but progress is progress. <coughs> it's okay. I've got a fairy. I also learned that if you hold a bomb, then draw your shield, you'll drop the bomb immediately and be much less likely to get hit. It's still a dumb strategy, but now slightly less so. I find the map, explore every room I can find, which, again, is surprisingly most of them. God, I must have been an angry kid or something. And finally, find the room where our new weapon is hiding. Locked door, difficult enemy, yeah, this is the one. I do my best to use all of my new bomb strats against him, but something's... off. Not only can he float in midair, which makes throwing bombs at him a terrible idea, but I also never replenish my bomb stock, which means I'm running dangerously low. He does go down eventually, but he's replaced by two more skeletons. And that's two more skeletons that I do not have the bombs for right now. I came back with a full complement of bombs to try again, but just like the first skeleton, these two are more skittish, and tend to jump away from my bombs more often than not. I also tried every other weapon I had, like Din's Fire, which looks really cool, but unfortunately they just block all the damage with their shields, leaving me with nothing except an empty mana bar and shattered dreams. Is this the end of the run? No. No, huh? Look at the video length, why would you ask me that? Rather than admit defeat, let's change gears and see what's happening in Cookie Town, shall we? Oh, there's, uh, there's no one here. Oh, wait, no, I spoke too soon. There's one Goron left. Time to do what we do best and blow him up. There we are. All right, kid, go ahead and tell me your name. Oh, I knew this day would come eventually. Hey, honey, can you get the lawyer on the phone? Someone's impersonating me on Telegram again. Oh, God, now he's crying. Look, just give me something cool and we'll call it even. That'll do. Turns out there's a secret entrance to the fire dungeon behind Darunia's throne room. Go figure. Now, normally, we'd die in less than a minute from the extreme heat, what with it being an active volcano and all, but throw on a red tunic and you're all set. Must be made of cotton or something. Oh, look, it's the Song Ninja again. Sheik does her best to teach me the Bolero of Fire, which I nail on the first try, obviously. Then we get into the Fire Temple. Let's do this. I bump into Darunia, but rather than helping a guy out, he says he's gonna go face the boss of the dungeon alone. What's worse, he wants me to go save all the Gorons that are currently in the prison cells located all around the dungeon. Can you at least throw me the boss key? Hello? Darun- Hello? Fine, let's go save some chocolate chip cookie men. Nothing too interesting to report for this dungeon, if I'm being honest. There's a couple illusory walls, which is kinda interesting, and some highly aggressive floor tiles. And that thing, which we are not going near unless I absolutely have to. But yeah, this dungeon pretty much just plays itself. 
save a cookie man, dodge some rocks, save another cookie man, nearly fall to my death, you get the idea. But after getting set on fire constantly and solving far too many puzzles, we finally get to the dungeon's mini boss. I don't know what to call this thing. It's a simple enough fight, if I'm being honest. Pull it out of the flames, then either injure it with the hookshot or bombs, whichever you see fit. Hit it enough times and it'll bite the dust, which unlocks the elevator to more puzzles. Cool. But get past those puzzles and the special tool of the dungeon is just within your grasp. All you need to do is sprint along a thin ledge while fighting with the game's wonky camera and do it on a strict time limit. <laughs> Easiest thing in the world, how hard can you- You fool! You absolute fool of a took! You had one job! Okay, 17 minutes and two shattered femurs later and we can try again. Don't fall off, don't look down, don't fall off, don't look down! Hey, not even close. And with that, all of our problems are solved. Because in this dungeon, we get the Megaton Hammer. Which is like a sword, but worse. It's slow, it's heavy, and it doesn't let you use your shield to block. But by golly is it a weapon that doesn't require ammo. It even has a jump attack. And a sideswipe of some kind. Again, not the greatest, but hey, at this point I'll take it. And with the hammer in hand, we're able to make it through the rest of the dungeon unscathed. Which means it's time for the boss. The Subterranean Lava Dragon. Volvagia. I hate to say it, but this boss may as well not exist. Play a game of whack-a-mole, then dodge its fire attacks while it flies around. You can even end the flying section early by hitting it with the hookshot. Phase 2 is exactly the same thing, except now there's falling rocks. It's not that hard. Rinse and repeat. Moving right along. Hard container get. Volcano eruption stopped. P probably And fire medallion obtained. A little out of order, but that's a challenge run for you. Back to the forest temple, where the hammer makes short work of literally every problem we've had up to this point. And while the skeletons are still difficult, since I can't block while using the hammer and it swings incredibly slow, at least we're no longer fighting a battle of attrition. Now it's just skill. And skill is something I occasionally have a limited supply of. And with all three skeletons defeated, we've done it. Fairy bow acquired. The rest of the game might as well bow out now. Between the hammer and the bow, I don't think there's much that could stop me. A fact I immediately prove by removing all of the haunted paintings in the dungeon, then smash said haunters into ectoplasm. Then do it all again. And you know what? Kill a haunted hand while you're at it. Watch out for the baby hands though. They may be small, but they got some real grippers. Do some ghost puzzles, do some ghost busting, and before you know it, you'll be at the dungeon boss. And would you look who it is? It's Ganon! And he's happy to see you. Well, his phantom is anyway. Real Ganon couldn't be bothered to show up, I guess. Phase one of the fight is simple enough. Just shoot Phantom Ganon with your bow whenever he pops out of a painting. Phase two, however, is another story. The boss stops fooling around and starts launching that energy ball of his at you whenever he gets a chance. Hook shots and bow attacks don't phase him, and the hammer can't play return to sender, which means we're at a bit of a standstill. Normally, you just play a quick game of volleyball and smack the energy ball back to him with your sword, but that's against the rules. So instead, we're gonna use our super secret end game weapon, a bottle. What? This is completely normal. Why are you looking at us like that? And once you've sped the volleyball up to the point where Phantom Ganon can't return your serve, just wail on him with your Megaton Hammer and proceed as usual. Easy boss, can't wait to do that to the real Ganon. Probably. Heart piece, early release from probation for good behavior, and the Forest Medallion. You know, things are looking up. With the hammer and bow in hand, I don't think we've got much to worry about in the way of brick walls and... The hell? The fuck is that? No, 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 I killed you, I saw you die! Oh god, it's already dropping lore on me. Skip, skip, please god, let me skip! Back to Zora's domain, where my alleged wife is allegedly waiting for me. This is gonna be a bad time. Bit of a frigid welcome, but I can't say I'm surprised. Man, even my father-in-law is giving me the cold shoulder. Okay, I'll stop. Unfortunately, there's no messing around with our giant fish friend as an adult, but there is an ice cavern to explore, so that's cool. Okay, that was the last one. I'm sorry. I can't stop them. They just... Nothing to really see here. Smash the baddies, take the blue fire, then use it to melt the red shields. Do this for what feels like forever, and you'll get your prize. Some steel-toed boots. Song Ninja teaches us some new beats, which I then use to warp right to the dungeon. Not much else I can do for the Zora's Domain anyway. Might as well... Ah, shit, I forgot my dad. Not gonna hear the end of that one. In any case, Lake Hylia. Or what's left of it, anyway. Kind of more of a puddle if you ask me, but I'm not here to argue semantics. Oh hey, my chicken hatched! I'm gonna name you Egg. Anyway, let's get into the water temple and move this party along. This temple is infamous for being confusing, aggravating, and entirely too long. And let me tell you, as someone who is coming back to this dungeon with a fully formed adult brain, it's not too bad. Don't get me wrong, it's still not great, and I don't remember almost drowning this much as a kid, but at least it's 
What? What do you mean Papa Zora had a water-breathing tunic? Well, does he do shipping? The hell is a convenience fee? Well, shit, guess we've got a minute or so tops when we're underwater. I can't be bothered to run all the way back to Zero's Domain at this point. Oh, hey, uh, you? I mean, okay, I deserve that, but hey, now that I'm here, would you mind helping a guy out? You wouldn't happen to have a blue tunic, would you? Rudo? Did, did you? She's just gonna let me drown here, isn't she? Constant near-death experiences aside, this dungeon's not too bad. The enemies are simple, the puzzles aren't overly complicated, and figuring out where you haven't been and where to go next, as far as raising and lowering the water level goes, isn't overly difficult either once you've got the map and compass. Don't get me wrong, it does start to feel a bit tedious after you've lowered the water for the third time in the last hour, trying to make sure you've gotten every room. But at this point in my life, I've seen much worse. And even without the blue tunic, I only drowned once when I got a little too confident in my ability to swim quickly. Not so fun fact, drowning is instantaneous in this game. You can have all 20 hearts and still die instantly once that timer runs out. But after an hour of swimming everywhere and anywhere, I finally make my way to the mini-boss of the dungeon, Darklink. A perfect copy of our not-so-perfect self. Normally, Darklink copies your every move, which makes him incredibly hard to fight. But since I'm not drawing my sword, he's a bit confused on how to react, and mainly just plays defense. You know what? Maybe Navi has something actually useful to say for once. Yes, thank you, Navi. Very insightful and poetic, but I was hoping for less philosophy and more applied science. Well, I'm running out of ideas over here. The hammer's too slow, the hookshot doesn't work, and Dark Link has apparently platinum Dark Souls because he's dodging through my arrows, my bombs, my Deku Nuts, and my bomb chews. The only thing he can't dodge is Din's fire, but unfortunately I don't exactly have a healthy mana bar. Time out, I'm gonna need to strategize, be right back. Let me just break into here, live through the nightmare hiding inside, and there we go. Magic meter doubled, and all it took was screaming in my sleep. Nice. All right, let's try this again. Not sure if this is gonna be enough, but it's the only thing that's worked so far, so hopefully it will. Okay, so far so good. I've hit him with every attack thus far, but that was my last Din's fire, and he's still standing. Just die already, you're a carbon copy of me, you should be absolutely awful. Okay, new idea. Maybe this is one of those things where if you're actually targeting the enemy, they can automatically read your moves. But if you don't target them, you can... Yep, sure is. And once more with feeling. Yeah, there we go. Now, I was only able to get those two hits in with all 17 of my Deku Nuts, but if I follow that up with nearly an entire magic bar's worth of Din's Fire, it's enough. Dark Link defeated. That took longer than expected. And for my troubles, we get a slightly longer hookshot. Huh. A few more puzzles and rooms, and after about two hours of struggle, I finally have the boss key and can make my way to the end of the dungeon. So what are we talking here? Some kind of shark, or jellyfish, or eel, or... Uh... No, oh, it's an amoeba. All right then. This boss is ridiculously easy. It makes water tentacles in the pool and tries to hit you with them. So it's up to you to get it out of there. Just dodge the initial swings of its watery limbs, then use your new hookshot to pull it out of its membrane and give it a good smashing. Rinse and repeat, ad nauseum. Eventually, it starts using more than one tentacle, but so long as you're hugging the outer walls instead of trying to get up close in the middle of the pool, you'll be just fine. And there you go, Morpha defeated. Oh look, a heart container. Ugh, are you still going on about that? Let it go already, would you? I'm a married man. Water medallion obtained. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. And would you look at that? Puddle Hylia is back to being a lake. Which means I can do this. What, you thought I wouldn't know where to get fire arrows? Have you seen this channel? And with the lake now full, we can swim on over and collect them. Not sure if they'll actually be useful, but it should make fire puzzles easier at the very least. So, two temples left. Time for some Gerudo Valley. We do have to infiltrate a Gerudo fortress, but how hard can that be? After all, we can stun anyone with our long shot. And if that's not enough, there's always the slightly more lethal option. Let's go with that one. I don't like being surprised by enemies I thought I already took care of. Now then, let's see what they've got in here. Oh, it's people. I don't feel so bad about using my bow now. But we can't just free the people without a fight. We have to deal with all the prison guards as well. This shouldn't take long. My hammer should, oh, they have an insta-kill move. Cool. Or rather, they have an insta-capture move. Guess we're in prison now, too. Thankfully, they're still figuring this whole prison thing out, because they left me in here with all my weapons and tools. And if they thought that jumping from seven stories up would be a deterrent, they clearly haven't met me. All right, let's try this again, but this time with an actual strategy in mind. There we are. Easy peasy. Ugh, three more of you are in here somewhere? Okay. Hold, please. All right, finally. That's the last of them. Be free, my beautiful man-child. Return to whence thou camest. Oh, uh, you saw that, did you? 
Look, I can explain. Oh, a membership card. All right then. Is there a monthly fee for this? I feel like there's a monthly fee for this. But now that we're an official Gerudo gang member, man, Sari is gonna be so mad at me. We can now open the desert gates, which conveniently leads right to the spirit temple. There's just one problem. I can't see shit out here. And even when I did somehow manage to stumble halfway through the desert, it turns out I need an eye of truth to get any further. Time to backtrack. And I mean really backtrack. Like backtrack seven years. Because we can do that, apparently. Just stick the replica sword back in its case and there you go. Seven years returned, just like that. Oh hey, Windmill Man, wanna hear a cool song I learned? Yeah, that's right. Link's over here inventing nightcore music, which then evaporates water by, uh, you see, when a windmill speeds up the, uh, look, it doesn't have to make sense. This was the 90s. But when we hop on down to the bottom of the well, ow, we can find our way to the first half of the shadow dungeon. Nothing too crazy to report here. Just a bunch of floating skulls, invisible walls and floors everywhere you look. Don't look? Uh, I don't know. And re-deads. Great, my favorite. No, 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 ah, my brain meets! And after getting very lost and confused and falling down a hole at least 15 times, I decided to go back to the future and ask Sheik for help. Hey, Sheik, do you know how to... Oh, the village is on fire. Did I do this? I don't remember doing this, but it sounds like something I would do. Oh, there he is. Hey, Sheik, got a question for you. Do you know what an eye of truth is? Huh. Oh, uh, well, you seem busy dealing with the SCP nonsense happening over there. I I'm just gonna... gonna... Ugh, where am I? Uh-oh. I passed out in fright again, didn't I? Um, did, did you see how that monster attacked me and knocked me out? Crazy, right? Anyway, moving past my shortcomings, I play some music with Song Ninja, get a larger quiver, because why not, then go to the graveyard with my newfound ninja song to try the Shadow Temple out. And good news, this place is just as much a maze as the child version is. Thanks, I hate it. I was able to find the mini boss though. If you've ever played this game, I bet you've got a very distinct fear response happening right about now. Say hello to Dead Hand. Its head is the weak point, so we need to find a way to hit. Huh. Okay, how about a hammer? Uh oh. Bombs? Well, crap, now what? Well, turns out you can injure it with the hammer, but only if you hit it at exactly the right time. There's like a two frame window where you can get a hit in, and it's finicky as hell. But, in true Backlogs fashion, I found a better way. If you stand on the pile of skulls over here, you can actually hit him with the hammer extremely consistently. Do that a few times, and he goes down without any more trouble. It always seems impossible, until it is done. And for our troubles, the worst looking boots I've ever seen. I'm not wearing those. Okay, so those aren't an eye of truth. Guess I missed something in the child version of the temple. And wouldn't you know it, I did. It's right here, in the middle of the floor, basically in plain sight. Yeah, that checks out. Play the right song, and the water goes down, opening up another few rooms. Including, you guessed it, another dead hand room. Hooray! At least with this one, we can use sticks without having to mess around. But I found out this cool trick, damn it, so I'm gonna use it. Take stick! Wait, wait, is my stick not gone? How did that happen? I've never seen this before, since when can you use your stick after it breaks? Kinda wish I had known about that earlier. But in any case, dead hand defeated. Again. And for our prize, Hey, now that's an eye of truth. And with it, we can now see through all the illusions around the dungeon. Very helpful, that. Right, back to adulthood again, back into the desert, and after blind firing my hookshot around trying to find my way through, I eventually make my way back to the hut where a ghost agrees to help me through the desert so long as I can keep up. Yeah, no, this is fine, no problem. Super glad this is the game we're playing right now. But in the end, we make it. The spirit temple awaits. Is what I would say, but there's literally nowhere to go in here. It's a single room, and I can't go into either of the doors. Thankfully, I bump into Song Ninja outside the temple, and he teaches me a song that will warp me here. Which means back to being a kid again, back to the spirit temple, and now we can enter the child size crawl space. Once we agree to give the goodies we find in here to Naburo. <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Nothing too crazy to report in here. All the monsters are things we've seen before, so I've already got a strategy for beating all of them at this point. This Anubis looking thing is new though. It needs fire damage to die, and it copies your movement, so it's more of a puzzle than an enemy. There's actually quite a few fire puzzles in this dungeon now that I think about it. And in true Backlogs fashion, I find a way to solve them without actually solving them, because fire bombs are always the answer. And before we know it, we found the mini boss, the Iron Knuckle. Here, hold this. He's slow, he's angry, and bombs seem to work just fine on him. 
Just, you know, try not to get hit by him. He hits pretty hard. But after several near misses and a multitude of bombs, we're in phase two. He can move much faster now, but he also has less armor, which means we can just wail on him with our slingshot. And there you go, easy enough. And for my trouble, we get, oh God, no, not you. Ah, there we are, actual treasure, the silver gauntlets. They let you lift super heavy things, but only fit adults. And wouldn't you know it, the adult we promised to give them to just got banished to the Shadow Realm. Ooh, darn, what a shame. Guess I know another adult that can use them. Oh yeah, they look much better on me than you. Trust me. And with our newfound strength, we can now push gigantic moon blocks. Just like the child side of the dungeon, there's not much new to report here. Kill the enemies, do the puzzles to open the doors, get swallowed by a like-like on accident and lose your shield, return with an immediate rebuttal of how about no, and get your shield back. Then do it all over again. And just like the child side, we've got another iron knuckle to deal with. The same strategies don't exactly apply though. Thankfully, I've gotten very good with the bombs at this point, so we can attack from long range instead. As for phase two, just pretend it's Dark Souls. Dodge the attacks, attack in response. Easy enough. Oh hey, look, more treasure. Ooh, the mirror shield. Ah, oh, I forgot about this one. Basically the same thing as our Hylian shield, except it looks way cooler and can reflect light, which means light puzzles are a thing now. Solve a few of those, and you'll eventually reach the end of the dungeon where a second mini boss is waiting. It's just a bigger, angrier iron knuckle. And honestly, the Dark Souls approach works just fine here, even for the slower stage. And just like that, we're done with her? Oh, damn, it's Niburu. Were, were you in that armor for seven years? Well, hey, good catching up, but it's time for you to go back to the Shadow Realm, Yugi boy. And with that done, it's time to fight the actual boss of the dungeon, the Sorceress Sisters, Twinrova. You can only use your shield to defeat these two, so don't try to get cute with anything else. Just reflect the right element at the right twin. Simple enough, really. I also found that free aiming was usually the better option, since Z-targeting doesn't always angle your shield properly. Do that enough times, and you'll reach phase two. What, uh, what's happening here? <laughs> I'm in danger. Same rules apply here, but instead of reflecting the spells back at them, we're gonna absorb their spells instead. Gather three of the same spells into your shield, and you'll be able to stun them to the ground. After which, you can start wailing on them with your hammer. It doesn't matter which spells you gather, either fire or ice, but you can't gather both. If you absorb a different element, it resets the counter and you'll need to start the absorption process over. So if you see the wrong spell heading your way, just dodge and wait for the right one. Repeat until defeat. Easy enough. Bye ladies, tell Din I said hi, would you? Oh my god, it's a heart container. And with that done, we've got the spirit medallion. One more to go. Which means it's time to get back into the shadow temple. Yay. I'll save you some time. This temple sucks. This place is basically Sen's fortress and the crystal caves combined. Lots of traps, illusions, and the occasional leap of faith here and there. Yes sir, everyone's favorite funhouse, to be sure. But there is a ghost pirate ship at one point. So I mean, that's something I guess. Kind of annoying to fight on though. But hey, I got to use my fire arrows to blow up some ancient architecture, so that was neat. But after a highly unnecessary final illusion puzzle, I make my way to the boss of the dungeon. A giant drum? Oh. Oh, I remember this one. Oh boy, do I. Hello, Bongo Bongo. It's been a few years. The method is simple. Shoot his hands and try your best not to get grabbed. Otherwise, it's out of the arena and into the drink for you. And trust me, that's not a drink you want to imbibe in. Manage to hit both hands though, and Bongo Bongo will go in for a charge attack. And if you can manage to shoot him in the eye as he charges, he'll be stunned just long enough for you to- Oh, come on! That wasn't a fluke either. Turns out, Bongo Bongo can't be killed with a Megaton Hammer. Or anything else for that matter. It's Master Sword or nothing. Which means, I hate to say it, that we've hit the final brick wall of the run. Unless... Unless there was a super weird set of circumstances that let you, with the proper setup, kill Bongo Bongo with nothing but your hookshot. Now I'll admit, I wasn't able to do this, because this only works with the very early versions of the game. Unbeknownst to me, there are three versions of the original Ocarina of Time. Nintendo actually remade the physical cartridges just to fix this, and a few other glitches that were left in the game on initial release. So shout out to SnipinG117 for giving us this footage. But as you can see, hookshot down into the hole, cutscene glitches out, and Bongo Bongo dies. No idea why, and I'm not a Zelda speedrunner, so I'm comfortably dumb enough that I don't really want to find out. But had we the right version, we technically could have beaten Bongo Bongo without a sword. Now, as far as my run is concerned, I just decided to bite the bullet and use my sword. 
Now I've come this far, I want to see what the end of the run looks like. Whether or not you want to count that hookshot glitch as a success or not is up to you. I'm not really sure how I feel about it myself. But regardless of whether or not this run is over, for the sake of entertainment, we're going to continue. Hard Container and Shadow Medallion. Which means we've got them all. Time to go back to the Temple of Time. Oh, hey, Sheik. Do you know what to do with the medal? No, no, no. No more lore. No more lore! Oh, God. The lore. It's too powerful. I can't... Oh, it's Zelda. Dang, girl, you've been avoiding Ganon and a ninja for the past seven years? That's super impressive. And you've got light arrows that you're willing to share? Best princess ever. Wow, and you can make a crystal? <laughs> the hell do you need me for? Oh, this isn't your magic, is it? Well, guess Ganon found us. All right, you know what time it is. Time to save the princess and kill the big bad. I head on back to Ganon's castle, where the sages finally do something of worth and create a rainbow road for me to cross the lava with. Can I have a go-kart to go with it? No? All right, figured I'd ask. So, spooky castle time. There are six mini dungeons that we have to clear to get into the actual tower itself. Basically a culmination of everything you've learned up to this point. And when you get to the end of a mini dungeon, you can shoot whatever that is and reduce the power of the barrier keeping you from the tower. Do this six times and you'll be able to continue. The only one that gave me any trouble at all was the shadow mini dungeon, go figure. And that was just because I was being obtuse and couldn't figure out a puzzle. Took me a few tries, but eventually I realized what I was supposed to do. And hey, we even got some cooler looking gloves for our trouble. Now we can lift the biggest things. That's good, I guess. More importantly though, look how cool we look. Fashion over function, 100%. And with our fashion maxed out and all six power notes destroyed, it's time for Ganon's Tower proper. This part was always my favorite part of the game growing up. Not only do you have multiple arena rooms filled with difficult enemies, but you can feel the tension growing as you climb all these carpeted stairs, along with the constant organ music growing louder and louder as you get higher and higher. And at the end of it all, the fight we've been building to this entire game. Ganon, King of Evil. It's been a long ride to get here. Time to get to work. Glad to see we're both taking this seriously. Now excuse me while I defeat you with nothing more than a bottle. There we are, now we just... Huh, okay, must be stronger than his phantom counterpart. Guess we gotta add a little spice to the equation. There we are. And now for our finishing touch. Hammer time. I wish I could say there was more to this fight than that, but I'd be a liar if I did. Just keep wailing on him with your hammer after your bottle arrow combo, and before you know it, Ganon goes down. Oh no, Ganon's using self-destruct. It's super effective. <laughs> oh, never mind. Apparently self-destruct only affects buildings. Oh shit, self-destruct affects buildings. And we're on top of a massive tower. Well, time to run. We've got three minutes to get off this crumbling heap and we've got to protect Zelda on the way down. Couldn't make it easy, eh Ganon? Funnily enough, I actually got really flustered on my first attempt and failed to defeat the enemies fast enough. Kind of forgot that the skeletons respawn if you don't kill them at roughly the same time. So, for those of you wondering what happens when you run off time, here you go. Well, that's a bit anticlimactic. In any case, I made it out on the second try with 30 seconds to spare. Not even close. And with that, Ganon's castle is no more. Man, bad guys need to learn to stop making large dark towers. Seems like every time someone makes one, someone always comes around to knock it down. But with that done, it's finally over. Ganon's dead, peace is restored, and the no sword run is complete. Oh, that's not good. Aw oh, man, are you serious? Don't you know when to quit? I guess not. All right then, guess it's time to show you what a Dark Souls player really looks like. Let's fucking do this. Come on, let's go. Give me an actual challenge. Don't just stand there. <coughs> now we're talking. Time to put all these years of gaming to work. Roll past without locking on, then lock on at the last moment to get in your jump attacks. Rinse and repeat. And with enough hits, we can enter phase two. A master sword? That piece of garbage? I mean, if it makes you feel better, I'll hold on to it, but it's still just a replica. Now then. Back to our strategy of dodge rolling and... Oh, that's interesting. Turns out, Ganon's been practicing the last 25 years as well. I should have expected no less. Time to improvise. 
Shooting Ganon's head with an arrow doesn't do damage, but it does stun him for a second. And you can also roll between his legs to get behind him a little faster. But Ganon's faster now too, so unless you're careful... Yeah. It is possible though, so don't give up hope just yet. Maybe it's time we started using every tool in the arsenal. With a light arrow to the face, Ganon's stunned for even longer, which means we've got more than enough time to get behind him and jump attack his tail. But there's just one problem. I've been slamming his tail to bits for the last 20 minutes now, and he's still not going down. I think I'm missing something here. And you know what? I was. Turns out, Ganon is literally programmed to not die unless he's hit with the Master Sword. Man, go figure that I'd have to use this replica sword against the greatest evil of all time. When this thing shatters on impact, I'm not paying for it. Oh, dang, that actually worked. What the? Where was that when I needed it? Eh? Oh, holy crap, this thing's not a replica? And I've just been carting it around this whole time? In that case, I've only got three words for you, Ganon. Take your lumps. And just like that, the greatest evil in all the land is defeated. Turns out using a sword was the way to go after all. Go figure. But with Ganon destroyed, there's absolutely no way for him to ever hurt me or the land of Hyrule ever again. Yup. Definitely the last time we'll ever see him again, for sure. But in any case, that's it. Zelda Ocarina of Time mostly defeated without a sword. A little disappointing that we couldn't manage to clear the entire game without it, but hey, that's just the way it goes sometimes. In all honesty, this was a lot of fun. Not only did it take me out of my comfort zone and force me to rethink all the encounters I've mastered for the last 25 years, but it also gave me a new appreciation for all the items that this game gives to you. I can say with certainty that this run was the first time I've used a majority of these items for anything other than their intended purposes, and it was really cool to see how wide their applications really are. And you know what? That's not even everything there was to see. There's more items, more quests, and more locations that I simply ignored because they weren't part of the main quest line. God, this game is huge. No wonder I played it so much when I was younger. I hope you had as much fun watching my antics as I did making them. This was a great stroll back down memory lane, and I'm really glad I decided to do it. And who knows? Maybe we can do this again with another Zelda entry in the future. Time will tell. But in any case, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.